Hello folks, welcome back to the Key Productive YouTube channel. On today's feature, we're taking a look at TaskAid. I'm going to be doing a bit of a revisited feature. I haven't checked it out in quite a while, but later in 2019, they got a $5 million funding round, which they also sort of positioned themselves to take on Notion. So it's going to be quite interesting. I'm going to catch up with the tool. I'm going to be doing uh, a sort of weekly plan, to-do list, and also looking at some of the templates, maybe a habit tracker or two, and uh, look at all of the features that you might need to know. So that's going to be today's video. Before we dive in, folks, a little word from our sponsor, Woven, this month. So here's a little bit more about them. So folks, this month here on Keep Productive, we're sponsored by Woven. Now, for those who don't know, Woven is a powerful and smart calendar application that can assist you in smart scheduling, managing your meetings, and planning your week ahead. They've released some new features that can be really helpful for remote workers and people working from home, including home view, so you can get important information about each meeting and glance ahead, Zoom integration to make it easy to immediately join a video conference call. Analytics so you can see and analyze how your team spend time. And iPad support so you can use Woven across all of your Apple devices. Now as many of you guys know, I'm a user myself and my personal favorite feature is the one-time scheduling which allows me to batch meetings, plan podcasts and interviews. Now we're really grateful to have them on as a sponsor and thanks again to Woven for sponsoring Keep Productive this month. So here we are with uh, Taskade. And as you can imagine, um, you get a little bit of customization. First thing I did was actually upload this background, which uh, Roy did for Keep Productive. And uh, you can upload your own background. But there's also these like really simple um, sort of designs here. You can even steal some of these. Reminds me a little bit of Vunderlist back in the day. Let's put this one on because it's quite uh, nice and easy. And you've also got dark mode, which I didn't believe was available before. Um, so that's very handy for making those um, sort of like core uh, central items uh, dark so that you can use it at night, uh, say. Now, Taskade has, uh, I believe, their third version out. So we're going to go ahead and create a new workspace um, and naturally get started on how that looks and works uh, before we begin. So when you create a workspace, you can add an avatar. You can also add a title as well as any emojis to the end of it if you want, which is something that uh, I didn't know you could do. You can also add a color as well. And it's very simple. Go ahead and press new workspace. So um, the cool thing with Taskade is you can invite other people. And what's great is they can be actually viewers, which means that um, they can you know, access uh, using comment and chat um, in projects um, and they but they cannot create and edit projects apparently even templates too uh, but you can invite guests um, and you can invite other people using this uh, invite link so here we are with task aids task aids main sort of layout so um i think it's not changed but repositioned itself a little bit so here you have projects um, projects can be any of the new areas you create. Um, so this could be tailored towards a team. It could be an individual that has a few projects. Um, it reminds me a little bit of um, Asana with this. So you have a, an agenda. So you can see uh, any tasks that are inside of all of those projects that are pulled out in, in, in an agenda. And also a roadmap. So you can see what is coming up. And you can scribble through this. We'll demonstrate how that works. You've also got templates here, so if you need to copy one or even create one from scratch, you can do, and that's particularly useful for teams that are looking to build their own templates, especially when it's a very custom setup, and any completed projects that you've had. And up here, you can also go and invite people like we just had a moment ago. So you can see that it's got a very similar sort of structure to Asana. Uh, and let's go ahead and create a new project um, and let's tailor this one um, towards an upcoming Skillshare release of a course that we have. So once I press new project, um, you can see a range of things pop up on screen. Uh, firstly, in this sort of central column, you have your project area um, where you can add all the relevant details, but they offer whether you want it just blank like um, you have in front of us or whether you want to follow a structure. And uh, you may, for example, um, in this case, um, I may actually want to just keep it in a weekly planner format. So if I click on the weekly planner format, it previews what that's going to look like. 
Um, and, you know, of course, you can go anything from meeting agenda to project board. So this looks actually a little bit more suitable for what I want to um, do. But there are more. Um, and if I go to more, uh, you can see, like, quite a range of them. Um, and that's literally anything. Now they've got tra travel itineraries for pretty much any country. Um, and uh, many, many team ones as well. Um, so I'll maybe touch on them a little bit later. But you can go back to task aid here um, and uh, actually restart that one. So I'm going to go with project board, I think. So I need to be able to plan this Skillshare class. I want to be able to release it next week. So you just tap to create um, and there we go. It sort of lands right here. Now on this left hand side, you do have the, the chat. Uh, and this is useful if you have teams. I believe we've done a feature on this one uh, where Joel came on and he actually showed how the video call worked, which actually worked pretty well. And uh, for being inside of an application like this, it's a little bit of a bonus, especially if you compare it to the likes of Notion that doesn't have any chat abilities outside of discussion or comments. So there we go. Here is the workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly add in all of the core details and come back to you guys with a bit more uh, information of what I've added. Okay, so some of the core details there, I added a new title to this project. Um, and as you can see, I also added a a, a new date. Um, so as you can see, you can add uh, a date here, which is very helpful uh, between obviously uh, any of those dates in advance. And also I added it in a signee. So if I click on it, I actually go all the way back to my own um, assignee setups. So if I click back into it, um, you can see also added, added a tag, uh, so you can add as many tags as you want. Uh, and that might be useful for drilling down on a project that is specific to content creation. Uh, I could go back in here and find it. So let me go ahead and add a few sort of um, boards that I think might be useful for setting things up. Okie dokie, so as you can imagine with TaskAid, you can have different types of view and we went with that board option because it's probably the most structurally best way to set this project up right now. Uh, but you can actually go up here and change the view. We'll touch on that in a moment. I'll share first what I went and created. I went and created a planning area so I can add tasks that are relevant to planning. I went and added a filming area and a launch area. So let me go ahead and populate that with a few tasks that might be useful. Okay, so as you can see here, um, I've added a few tasks and you may have seen there that I went on this due date area. What's cool about the due date is you can add a start time and a due time. So for example, if I wanted to set this, um, I think I did actually did it here between 10 and 12 p.m. So I can actually see more granularly what um, I want to um, be able to get out of that task. Now, the one thing you can do with each of your tasks, something I actually haven't done, is go up here and change the color of it. So you can highlight it, make it a bit more predominant. You can also set a priority. So for example, if I wanted to make these ones quite high priority, I can simply go ahead and add a hashtag uh, and that basically uh, draws it out um, instead of naturally, um, you know, going into this every single time and adding one. I can indent it, I can unindent it so you can have the subtasks that you need. And I can also add it to my Google Calendar uh, or sync it with my calendar. So one of the things I noticed there as well is I can add tasks without necessarily even um, adding a bit more detail to them. Um, so I can just have them as almost checklists. And if I want over here, I can go and create new columns too. So this is very helpful for those looking to set things up in a very Kanban style fashion. And naturally you can add more tasks below. Now, one of the things that you may have seen is this sort of like little ticking thing pop up and uh, you can actually change the format of each of the things. So you can change it to circles, uh, you can change it to hearts, you can change it to dots, um, and anything in between. Um, there's even, you know, just having them as plain text if you want to. I'll go for circle circles, <laughs> and uh, you can make it pretty customizable. Now, one of the things I noticed is this project looks like it's going to take a little bit longer, so I might actually set the date till the 26th. Now, you may see there that uh, I can have multiple days, so if I wanted to, I could scrubble between a start date and an end date. So I may say, actually, it could take from anywhere between now to the 25th. So I can change that. And that's uh, very helpful because that's easily done at the top there. So as you can see, 
I've clearly broken down um, some tasks and some projects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change it to list view. Now list view just shifts perspective into being a bit more like a little bit like a Google uh, Doc here. You can essentially see uh, your task and what tasks you have to do. Let's say I went ahead and completed scripting. You can see that the progress bar indicates that I've completed 11%. And down here, I also have the ability to hide um, and comp show completed tasks uh, inside of my area. I could also get a bit more of this sort of editing bar available at the top. So as you can see, you can add the likes of uh, highlights um, and details like that. So for example, if I was looking to highlight this one particularly, then I can do. And the great thing is, you can switch back to the board view and you can see that the highlight appears on this left hand side. So that's the list view, that's the board view. Let's take a look at the action view. So the action view is a bit more like seeing it in a, a table. Um, and it doesn't, if I'm honest, it doesn't look as attractive as I thought it would. As you can see here, it's a little bit sort of off center. This is the Mac version. Um, so as you can see, it's not necessarily um, should be working fully. But as you can see, a few of the dates are a bit too squashed. Um, but it works in a nice way, and for many people, that sort of view is, is more traditional to if they've used Excel before and other such tools. And you get this lovely uh, board sort of view up here. You can still do all the relevant editing and also find the chat up here. So what does the mind map view look like? This is quite cool. This is something they added um, more recently, and you can see here that it's a visual representation, and you can go ahead and add that. A lot of applications, I know that uh, whiteboard applications like Miro, uh, Media Note, and many more of those tools are looking to do more of this. And you can even go ahead and add uh, more subtasks to each of them, and on and on and on, uh, which is very useful. Let's go ahead and delete them, or else I will forget about it. So ideal, there is a third, uh, or a fourth, actually a fifth type of view, and that is the org chart view. And this might be a little bit more suitable for teams that are, or somebody that's got lots of subtasks, or is planning a structural layout of the company, and you want to be able to just have this a bit more of a, um, you know, a, a structured view. So, so if I went back to this view and changed the format to maybe a bullet, uh, and the same goes here as well. So I'm going to select these, going to select these and change it to a bullet point view. So let's go back to this org chart view. You can see it's much more sort of comprehensible. It's not necessarily checking off things, and this is, could be a great way to organise you and the company. And this is something I'd say that the two things that aren't available inside of Notion, although there are some integrations to work around this is the mind mapping and the org chart views. So brilliant, we've got ourselves a little bit of a project to get working on and uh, you can even click in um, to the priorities. So if I wanted to find out, okay, inside of this project, what is my priorities, then I can do so. And you can do that across the board as well, um, which is very helpful. So all you have to do is go to search down here. You can do a range of things as well. For example, check all, fold all, um, so if I wanted to fold all of the items up, I can do, and you can open them back up up here. Um, and you can also share, check your notifications, pin this one, star this one, which are great ways to highlight them or favorite them. So you can also add this one as well to a template. So if you went ahead and made a template and went, oh, I should have made this into a template, um, then you can do so. So that's the structure of a board. So the one thing I did is I actually saved it to my personal area. You can have lots of different workspaces if you want. So if I go ahead and I move it to this Keep Productive, which should be the right one. Uh, actually, it's the wrong one. So I can move it back on to the next Keep Productive. Who names the, the two things Keep Productive? But there we go. You can see there that it pops up. So one of the things you have to know is if you don't get it in the right area, um, some of the details like that are core to the project, like the calendar, dates, um, they, they need to be reset. And that's, I think, because they associate themselves to the main calendar, and then they almost create themselves uh, a new area inside of the workspace. So that's just something to know. So don't make that mistake that I did, uh, or else you have to go back in and change that. Um, I'm sure that's maybe something they'll want to improve. But you can see now it's landed in the right area. So what's cool is if I want to go to my agenda view, you can see there that certain tasks are beginning to appear. 
So what it does is all of the projects that are currently in there, it extracts them and naturally you can go in and see those tasks. And if I press them, I can see them instantaneously. So the event agenda view is quite a good way to be able to draw out the things that you need to do inside of a task and uh, necessarily keep the stuff that doesn't necessarily need actioning inside of the task. And you can go over here and see that this project is due for around here. So if I press control and uh, zoom, uh, that's command and zoom on the Mac, I can zoom in on the project. And if I have multiple of them, they're obviously coming out. So that's obviously very, very helpful. And if I go up to this calendar view up here, you can see that all of these tasks are starting to weave in. So this is what I quite like about TaskAid is they've got this centralized calendar, something that the likes of Notion doesn't have, where you can literally go on your week view and you can see, okay, uh, what have we got for next week? And you can see all of the tasks as well as, um, you know, actually being able to see um, pinpoint tasks and what you have to do as well as a day view, which is very helpful, and an agenda view. So if you wanted to see more of a traditional structure of how that is, I, I, actually, I'm surprised there's not a print option here because I can see that being printed off for many people that like to see that in physical edition. So you can go to sync with calendar as well, and you can set up generation, you can generate an API token. So that is good with Taskit. This has an API, so if you wanted to connect it to an existing application, you can do. Now, talking about this left-hand bar, you can see there that it's got a few things. Search, where you can find specific things. So if I wanted to find anything to do with scripts, I can press enter and uh, I can find the relevant tasks to it and actually get access to them. You can also go to recent, which is very handy. Uh, recent's quite good if you have lots of different workspaces and lots of different actions to go through and start as well if you have start areas. Okay, so let's go back to this area and let's go ahead and create um, one of their week planners. So let's say I wanted to get ahead, start planning my week ahead. So I'm going to go ahead inside of this one. And as you can see here, the week ahead is here. So you can add this to your calendar, although it's probably not relevant to. So maybe I want to set a few goals. So I want to create a Skillshare class. So there we go, I've added a few elements there and I can actually go ahead and make this into more of a uh, bullet point or order list, some of the ABC goals if I want to. Um, and one thing I can do as well is edit those tags. So if I wanna add a new tag like planning and adding a nice color there, I can do as well. So I can assign this to myself, which is pretty easy in a personal workspace. You probably don't even need to do that. And I can go ahead and start planning what Monday looks like. So there we go, I don't necessarily need to plan the full week ahead, but you can see here that the week planner could be a good way to start organizing what your week ahead looks like. Now, one of the things I did there is obviously added some tasks. I added a subtask indented one there, just for demonstration purposes, but you can also see I added the due date of Monday. Now, if you, for example, had some specific times to do these things, then maybe you wouldn't even need to do something like that. You could even add specific times and dates and as you can imagine, if I go out of this um, and I go to my agenda view, um, then you can see that on the Monday, I can see all of my Monday tasks and it will take me to my Monday area. You probably don't need to necessarily do that. I think it's a case of overcomplication. Uh, you may just you know, fill up your, your timeline a bit too uh, much. And for example, you could overcomplicate it by going to the ad calendar and maybe going, okay, this is that full week. If I go back out and go to my agenda, uh, sorry, my uh, timeline, you can see that this week appears. So you don't necessarily have to go to those lengths. You might want to, but as you can imagine, all the tasks are extracted, so it's not too um, much of a fuss. So if I, were, for example, were to uh, add a few due dates to this one, so if I said the 21st at 9 a.m. Uh, and set the time, then if I go back out, just for demonstration purposes, I go to my agenda, you can see that the plus plan paternity leave timeline is there. Um, and if I go to my calendar, go to my week view and go to the 21st, 
you can see that that comes in just there. So that's very helpful if I wanted to find uh, a specific task I needed to do. But I wouldn't say that's overcomplicated. Like I think that you could overcomplicate the calendar in Taskade if you wanted to. Okay, folks. So I talked a little bit about the the week planning, a little bit about how to go about project planning. The one thing I want to touch on is more on the side of um, habit tracking, bullet journaling, those sort of things. As I said, there's these templates that are available. Um, so for example, if I went to new and I went to more and I wanted to search for a journal, I think I clicked off there. See that the bullet journal comes up as an option, but there are a few other journals. You don't necessarily have to jump on board with that one. The daily gratefulness journal. So if I go ahead and use this one, um, you can choose the workspace that you do. I believe it's that one. I bloody hope it's that one. Um, and you can see here that you can start filling that out. Now, one of the things you can do is if I go back to keep productive, I've got the right place. Um, I can go to templates and you can see that the template is now copied into my template template library. And anytime I want to copy the template, um, then I can. Uh, and I can add it into my own area if I want to. So I think I've solved it. All you have to do once you've added it into your templates area is actually go into your regular new create area and just press this journal. Uh, and then you can get that latest one that you edited and that could be very helpful. So you can go and double tap to create. And once it loads, you can see that it's accessible here. So perfect, I can go ahead and um, obviously add as much as I want in terms of journaling um, to this one. But the thing to note as well is that you don't have to have this view on as uh, this sort of view here. You can have it as bullet points. So that makes it quite interesting as a potential tool for note taking. So if I went to new and I went to meeting agenda, you can see here that although inside of this team meeting agenda, there is goals, there's tasks, there's notes. So you could potentially use this as a note taker to some extent, because obviously you've got that ability to see it. You can even print and export it. Um, so it does make a potential tool for a note taker as well. And especially for a lot of people that want to be able to see their notes in, for example, a revision style of note taking, um, then that could be pretty cool. And I'm not saying, for example, you could um, upload attachments, you can add comments, and uh, you can set a priority and stuff like that. So it, it does have the potential of being a lightweight note taker at the same time if you wanted to add some notes. So for example, let me demonstrate that of how I could do that from scratch. New, uh, let's start with the blank one, and let's double tap that to make it reality. So let's, uh, let's start with uh, notes here. Let's add a, a, a nice uh, note taking relevant uh, title. I don't need to add any um, sort of edit. So I could, what I could do here is I could very simply just start with some square bullet points. And uh, every time I want to create a new area, I could start creating a new area. So what I could do is actually modify this to start out is just by changing this one to the different types of books I'm reading or for example, like you know, masterclass, these are the things I'm learning, or the specific one I'm doing, art of negotiation. And I could start adding some notes here. So I could be like, in this lesson, uh, I learnt, etc. And use the highlighting to extend some of the lessons uh, that I'm learning. So it's actually potentially could be used as a note taker as well. And that can be quite exciting, um, especially when you're, you know, being able to see it in some sort of mind mapping view, organizational chart view, action view to some extent. Um, you don't necessarily need a due date, but you can actually make those notes actionable in which you couldn't do in apps like, well, to some extent in apps like um, Todoist and things like that. Oh, sorry, not Todoist, Evernote mixing up my applications here. So folks, I do hope you enjoyed that overview. I hope we touched on some stuff about project creation, week planning, journal, maybe even talking about note taking inside of TaskAid. Um, but as you can imagine, um, it's a very versatile tool. I do see it being near enough the closest thing to Notion as a personal tool. In a way, it's really hard to explain. It's like a, a very nice middle ground between Notion and a traditional to-do list application. So 
it's sort of actually it's sort of like actually I'm going to revise that. It's sort of like a blend between Notion and Trello because it's got that very traditional structure, very um, you know comfortable workspace. But I really do like the way that they've done this application. So folks, I'll probably talk about Taskade in the future, maybe their Notion versus Taskade thing. There are some things obviously that I mentioned there that I'm not too happy with inside the application, but overall, it's not a bad application for that. And it's a free one at that. They do have an upgrade plan. Um, it's $7 per user per month that gives you unlimited projects. Um, I can't remember actually how many you get inside of there. So you, get, you do get unlimited projects inside of the free account. Um, it's just you are limited to the amount of workspaces you have and templates inside of the free one, as well as file upload and much more. But impressive free plan, uh, to say the least, um, and something that they're probably going to be working on in the future. So folks, thank you very much for dropping by. Thanks to Woven for sponsoring and have a fantastic day ahead. I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.